Once upon a time there was a mother pig and her three piglets. Three brothers are the same height. Round, pink, with the same funny tails. All summer the pigs played in the green grass, basked in the sun, basked in the puddles. But then autumn came. One day my mother said that it was time for them to think about winter. She asked them to build a big house. The younger brother said that winter is still far away. The middle brother said that he would build his own house when needed. And the older brother decided to build the house himself. The younger and middle brothers did nothing but play their games. It got colder and colder every day. The younger brother decided to build a house out of straw. The middle brother thought it would be very cold in the thatched house in winter. He decided to build a house from twigs and twigs. By the evening their housing was ready. They were very proud of themselves and could not get enough of their buildings. Now they were free and could do whatever they wanted. They decided to go to their older brother and see what kind of house he had built for himself. The older brother was busy building. He applied stones, kneaded clay and slowly built himself a reliable, durable home. The younger brothers found their older brother at work. They were very surprised at what kind of fortress he was building. The elder brother calmly continued to work. The younger and middle brothers began to joke and laugh at his house. They were so amused that their screeching echoed far across the lawn. The elder brother asked to be quiet because the wolf could hear them. The younger and middle brothers were amused even more. They decided that the older brother was just a coward. And the two brave brothers went for a walk. On the way, they sang and danced, and when they entered the forest, they made such a noise that they woke up the wolf who was sleeping under the pine tree. The disgruntled and hungry wolf went to the place where the screeching of two stupid pigs came from. The brothers walked merrily and talked about how easily they would deal with the wolf. And suddenly they saw a real living wolf. He was standing behind a large tree. He had very evil eyes and a huge toothy mouth. The brothers were so frightened that their thin tails trembled finally, finally. The wolf prepared to jump he snapped his teeth and blinked his right eye. The pigs suddenly came to their senses and, screeching across the forest, rushed to run away. Raising clouds of dust, they rushed each to his own house. The younger brother ran to his thatched hut and slammed the door in front of the wolf. The wolf growled and demanded to open the door. The younger brother, out of fear, could not utter a word. Then the wolf began to blow. The light roof instantly flew off the thatched hut. The wolf took a deep breath and blew a second time, and the thatch house flew in all directions. The wolf was delighted, snapped his teeth, and pounced on his younger brother. But the pig deftly dodged and ran. He ran to the house of the middle brother. The brothers managed to lock themselves up and looked at each other in dismay. The wolf got angry and began to blow. The house is slightly askew. The wolf blew a second, then a third, then a fourth time. But the house was still standing. The wolf took a deep breath and blew for the fifth time. The house shook and fell apart. Only one door stood for some time in the middle of the ruins. In horror, the piglets rushed to the house of their elder brother. The wolf ran after them. He was sure that this time the pigs would not run away from him. The piglets quickly rushed past the large apple tree without even hitting it. And the wolf did not have time to turn and hit the apple tree, which covered him with apples. One hard apple hit him between the eyes. A big bump jumped on the wolf's forehead. At this time, the younger and middle brothers managed to run into the house of the older brother and bolt the door. The wolf ran to the door, growled and demanded to open the door. The younger brothers were very scared and could not say anything in return. And the elder brother knew that he and his brothers had nothing to fear in a solid stone house. Then the wolf sucked in more air and blew as soon as he could. But no matter how much it blew, not a single stone moved. And then he looked up and noticed a large, wide chimney on the roof. 
he carefully climbed onto the roof and began to go down the pipe. The pigs heard a rustle. The elder brother immediately guessed what was the matter. He quickly rushed to the cauldron in which water was boiling and tore off the lid. The wolf went down the pipe and fell straight into the cauldron. His eyes widened to his forehead. The scalded wolf flew out with a wild roar and rushed into the forest. And the three little pigs looked after him and were glad that they had so cleverly taught the evil robber a lesson. From that time on, the brothers and their mother began to live together under one roof. Girl Mary lived in the Kansas steppe with her puppy Toto, Uncle Henry and Aunt Em. In these places, hurricanes were common and the family now and then hid in the cellar from the raging elements. One such day, Uncle Henry noticed an impending storm. He opened the cellar hatch and then called Mary and Aunt to hide. At that moment, the frightened Toto jumped off Mary's arms and hid under the bed. When the girl finally caught the puppy, the wind howled and the little house shook. The house turned around its axis several times and then began to slowly rise into the air like a balloon. Soon the house landed and he and Toto went out into the street. A green lawn with fruit trees spread around and amazing flowers grew everywhere. This is how Mary ended up in the magical land of Oz. While admiring the wonders of nature, the girl did not notice how very strange people in hats approached her. They were adults, but no larger than little Mary. Chief among them was an old woman dressed all in white. She approached Mary and thanked her for helping the girl defeat the evil sorceress. Mary was very surprised. Then the old woman pointed to the house, from under which protruded feet in silver shoes. At that moment, the legs disintegrated into hundreds of small particles and disappeared, leaving only their shoes. Mary was even more frightened because she really wanted to go home. But as it turned out, neither the old woman in white nor other strange people in caps knew how to help the girl. They advised Mary to put on the silver shoes of the witch, go to the Emerald City and find the powerful wizard Oz there. Only he could help Mary return home. There was one yellow brick road leading to the Emerald City. Mary set off along it. The first she met was a cornfield guarded by a scarecrow. Instead of a head, he had a pouch filled with straw, and his mouth and nose were painted with paint. The scarecrow turned out to be alive, and his name was Scarecrow. He told Mary that he also wants to get to the Wizard Oz to ask him for brains. The girl took pity on the scarecrow, helped him climb over the fence, and they hit the road. Okay. The yellow brick road led Mary and the scarecrow into the forest. Suddenly they heard someone moan. A human figure gleamed in the thicket of the forest. It was the Tin Woodman. Its parts were so rusted that he could not move an arm or a leg. Oh, no. Then, in a hut nearby, Mary found an oil can. She lubricated the woodman's parts, and he began to move again. It turned out that the woodcutter had long dreamed of getting to the wizard Oz to get a real heart. So together they continued their journey to the Emerald City. A yellow brick trail led friends through a dense forest. Suddenly a lion jumped out of the thicket onto the road. As soon as he swung his paws at the scarecrow, he heard Toto barking and was very frightened. The lion told Mary that he was born shy and therefore does not mind going to the wizard Oz and asking for real courage. When the friends finally reached the Emerald City, the Great Oz agreed to fulfill their wishes, but set one condition. He asked to kill the Wicked Witch of the West. And my friends had to agree. Under cover of the night, Mary, the Scarecrow, the Lion, and the Woodcutter made their way to the Witch of the West. She was waiting for them, and therefore sent flying monkeys to the friends. They threw the Tin Woodman off the cliff, poured all the straw out of the Scarecrow, and captured Mary and Leo. When Mary was brought to the Witch of the West, driven to despair, she poured water on the witch. To the girl's surprise, the old woman began to melt, and soon only a muddy puddle remained of her. When the friends returned to the Emerald City and demanded that the wizard fulfill their wishes, it turned out that Oz was not a wizard at all, but a real deceiver. However, he tried to fulfill the requests of his friends. 
So, Oz stuffed the scarecrow's head with sawdust, from which he experienced a surge of wisdom. I inserted a scarlet silk heart into the tin woodman's chest. And he gave the cowardly lion a potion to drink, which made the king of beasts feel brave. Seeing Mary's silver shoes, Oz laughed. After all, the shoes were magic and all this time they could carry the girl home. Mary said goodbye to her new friends, tapped her heel three times and ended up at home with Toto. But the silver shoes were lost on the road, 